So I'm going to uh, put on the traffic display just in case I need it. And at this time, we are climbing towards our cruise altitude. Please remain seated and keep your seatbelt fastened until the seatbelt sign is turned on. I'm lagging a little bit here, but not too bad. Over the island, over the Atlantic, climbing like a bat out of hell. Beautiful view. And I believe that's Tenerife off to the left there. Or maybe that's just the base of the cloud. I don't know. Can't tell. It is now safe to use your portable electronic devices. And we're over 10,000 now, so you can see the airplane's increasing the speed to 320 knots for the climb. And I'll actually increase that to 330. To speed intervene. Thirty. Oops. And three thirty is set. Actually, that looks like that's going to be a little fast. Back it off to three twenty-five. I get there, I just, what can I say? Alright, there's Tenerife. And I'm not going to turn the seatbelt signs off just yet. Um, I am above 10,000 feet though, so I'll turn off my landing lights. And the taxi lights. So, um, climbing above 14,000 feet, LNAV is armed, VNAV is armed, I'll uh, do my fuel, first fuel check here, um, take a look at my notes, uh, my first fuel check is at Kated. And uh, I'll do a video recording of that, I suppose. Um, there we go, Tenerife. This is just default scenery, so nothing special. But still, clouds look pretty. Rex definitely helps with that. And you can see... Um, well, marked on the nav display there is, I believe, Tenerife, what they call now call Tenerife North, uh, which is where the big accident happened. Very pretty, though. Very, very pretty. So turning over Tenerife now, and enjoying the view, and waiting to get up to 340, and then I'll record my first uh, fuel check, so be offline for a little while here. Not too long, though, because obviously, as you can see, Cadiz is only 209 miles away, so not that far. Um, and it may even just run together the way things work out. And hey, sun's coming up on the west coast. 
outside the window. The actual real life window. I've got, uh, you guys can't see it, but I've got a good data set, I think, over here on the EFB, which will make my life easier. Because it calculates times like maximum fuel and all that stuff, which I can calculate anyway as I go throughout the flight, but it'll make, still make life significantly easier. Already 5,200 miles to go. And as you can see, we're projecting 40.9 pounds upon landing in San Francisco. Um, and it's pretty good. Well above uh, the flight plan, of course. I'm sure I'll encounter winds that I didn't expect. And uh, it won't quite be that high, but uh, hopefully, all things being equal, uh, I'll at least touch down or shut down with 26 pounds of fuel and uh, no less than 30 in my ideal world. But we'll see what happens. And in case you're wondering, wondering about the differential brakes, uh, my rudder pedal's stuck in the sensitivity of the differential brakes. It causes problems. I have to put my feet literally on the pedal to make it go away. It's a pain. But I'm in the air, so it doesn't matter if the differential brakes on. It's just slightly annoying on the display. I'm going to check my altitude here. Still climbing out of bat, like a bat out of hell. 0.84 Mach already. 31,800 feet. I don't think it would be realistic that it would be climbing this fast. I don't know. Thousand feet to go. And we should change see this change here to speed and then Vena path. As soon as it captures the altitude, which it should do momentarily. There we go. Speed, Vena path. cruise altitude of 34,000 feet and that's basically um, apart from a few speed errors and climb errors and such that's basically how you do a departure on the Boeing 777 from cold start to uh, cruise altitude and I'll come back a little later and show you the uh, joys of the fuel check and some other miscellaneous things, I'm sure. Um, hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, till then, stay safe, stay sane, happy railroading, happy landings. Bye bye. Now I'm bored to tears at 30,000 feet. I'm on Facebook and I'm posting tweets. I'm blogging while I'm logging hours flown. So text me and chat with me, quick, before I hit a tree. Uh, coming up on Kated, which is my first fuel checkpoint. So I'm going to show you guys how I do that procedure. Um, it's really pretty simple. Um, as you can see, here's my waypoint, first waypoint Kated. Um, I'm going to delete some extraneous information here. Okay, so as you can see through the way, first waypoint here, um, I'm expected to be at flight level 340. 
as you can see, that's where I'm at. Um, ground speed is expected to be 459 knots. Um, at the moment, ground speed is 413. I've got more of a headwind than expected, it looks like. Um, so that's going to change things a little bit, obviously. Um, and then uh, right here, when I go over the checkpoint, I'll enter the fuel I have remaining versus the fuel I've used. And then the other thing I'll add here is fuel over destination FOD and that uh, basically is me writing down uh, how much fuel the flight management computer thinks I'll have upon landing in San Francisco and I do this for each waypoint I pass um, every hour or so uh, obviously when I'm not on break obviously when I'm on break while well, I'm sleeping and if there's a fuel leak while well, I'm sleeping well then everybody's simulationly screwed um, but assuming that doesn't happen. Um, things are pretty good. Uh, in the meantime, I suppose we can uh, get a good view of things. Not that there's anything to get a good view of. Um, like I said, out over the open open Atlantic at this point. Um, not into ETOPS just yet. I'll go ahead and scale out full tilt on the nav display. Um, ETOPS, I believe, begins just after that point. I'd have to check with the dispatch sheet, though. Um, because right now, if I look at my route, uh, GCLP, I'll put that in the fixed page. Which is Grand Canaria is 237 miles away so that's definitely within a half a half hour flying time single engine uh, complete with descending to 10,000 feet and oh gosh I'm gonna have to check my dispatch sheet to see uh, ETOPS alternate LPZA is the other airport I want to be referencing. LPZA. Not in database. LPAZO. Somebody needs their crew rest already. LPAZ. Okay, so as you can see, I've got LPAZ off to my right. And obviously, um, Grand Canaria is behind me. At this point, though, uh, if I had a problem, I'd obviously be going back to Grand Canaria. So, certainly not in ETOPS airspace yet. Um, and now 24 miles to go to Kedid. Um, but it helps to do that on the fixed page. Uh, keeps you apprised of your situation. Also we have um, the EFB, which there you can see Grand Canaria. Um, and if I do root setup and I hit modify. Oh no, I'm sorry, that's not what I want to do. Progress, root setup. Alternates is what I want to do. I can add in my alternates here. Uh, LPAZ.
KJFK because those are my two uh, ETOPS airports. Estimated time remaining 10.7 hours. Estimated fuel endurance at this point. Take a look and we see that we have. 174.6 pounds of fuel. Now we're using 16 pounds an hour. So 174.6 divided by 16. And I show that we have 10.9 hours of fuel remaining. So, not a very good fuel check in that regard, because the numbers are so close together. But then again, I'm going to step climb very, very soon, so I'm not too worried about that. So, good fuel check. No fuel leaks. Uh, nothing to worry about, and that's how I do my fuel check. Um, oh, I'm in the step climb. Um, I'll go to the VNAP page, and I'll look at my optimum. It says the optimum is 350, it recommends 360. Um, I'm gonna take a peek at my dispatch sheet here, and see when it tells me to step climb. It, it has me at 34. It doesn't tell me to go to 36 until uh, until 3440 North. So I shall actually program it that way. I'll I'll take the nav log and I'll go ahead and program into the FMC uh, the winds and the waypoints and when according to the dispatch sheet. I actually do want to step climb, but uh, let's say for argument's sake, I did actually want to step climb to 386 though. What I do is I'd line select that, I'd then select 36,000 feet in the altitude hold. And then I'd use this vertical speed window here, which I can't really show you um, without having the airplane climb. And I don't want to climb. Uh, to get it a climb rate at 37,000 feet. Go back to VNAV speed. Wonder why I was holding a steady 0.84, that seemed a little fast. Uh, 0.826, uh, that's what you get for with the cost index of 41, or 40, just a little bit slower, uh, but saves fuel, so. Uh, but anyway, if I wanted to execute that, I would just hit 36,000 there, and um, set a climb rate of 500 feet a minute, so the passengers don't really notice. Uh, of course, I kind of defeated that purpose on the climb out, but hey, what are you going to do? Um, so I'm not going to execute this in the FMC. I'm going to hit a race. But what I am going to do here is I'm going to change my speed to long range cruise, which gives me the .839 that I kind of want anyway. So I'll go ahead and execute that. And the plane will basically speed up to uh, 0.84 again, which is the typical speed of the 777. Um, so it's not the economic speed. Economic speed would be a bit lower, but uh, oh, what the heck? I get their itis. What can I say? So um, at this point, 4,872 miles to go, and. Uh, Translates, according to the EFB anyway, 
into 9 hours and 52 minutes remaining and estimated arrival time is now uh, 23 minus 7 uh, it's now 16.25 or 4.25 p.m. Um, West Coast time. Okay, so it hasn't quite been an hour, but uh, we're getting close. And I was looking back at the videos that had been recorded, and it looks like it's better not to live stream it, both for my bandwidth considerations and for other things. Uh, not sure how I'm gonna quite get this out to people, but, um, there might be ways. So, anyway, I'm sitting here in the 777, uh, still, early part of the flight, uh, approximately two hours in, give or take. Uh, as you can see, hopefully you can see my mouse here, uh, 0.839 still, uh, as it was the last time I left you. And 36,000 feet is what I have set in the altitude hold, but it's not punched in, and that's uh, from before when I was demonstrating how I would do a step climb. Uh, so now it's 34,000 feet in the PFD, and are actually holding 34,000 feet. And coming up to our next waypoint here, um, just passing Santa Maria. Portugal on the Azores on the right, and uh, our next waypoint here in 112 miles uh, is uh, 32 degrees north, uh, 30 degrees west, and in case you're wondering what that green line is, uh, that's just a climb line. Uh, when the aircraft detects that it's climbing, it uh, paints a line uh, projecting where it thinks it'll be at the level that is desired. And what's happening basically is, as the weather updates and as the autopilot kind of meanders a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit, um, I'll show you here so you can see it clearly. I don't know why I can't grab, there we go. Um, you'll watch it here, the altitude will wander a little bit, not much, but a little bit, uh, partially as it gets weather updates from wrecks, uh, partially just because, you know, even if you're a computer, you can't hold the completely perfect altitude, it's very, very hard hand flying to do a completely perfect altitude, and, uh, I'm amazed computers do as well as they do, I'm amazed humans do as well as they do, uh, so there you go, it almost jumped, to uh, 20 feet just in that moment there. So, I mean, that happens. Um, it's just the way it goes. So, uh, but as you can see, if we're looking at the PFD, the autopilot's engaged, we have speed mode engaged of the auto throttle, LNAV's engaged, VNAV path. Uh, very typical displays for the cruise portion of the flight. So, I probably should step climb to 360. But I'll do it after this checkpoint. So, 12 miles to go. And I'll go ahead and pre-select again. But zoom in so you can see it, because I know the resolution of the video I'm recording is not all that great. 360. And I'll open the vertical speed so you can see it. And change that to Mach for the speed hold. So I'm holding the right speed. And when I'm ready to climb, I'll just set that up to 500 feet a minute. And now I can go 3, 6, 1, 2, 3. Line select that into the cruise altitude. Hit execute. Um, it's not going to climb yet, though, because it's holding, as you can see, uh, 
we're holding our current altitude at 34,000 feet because I haven't yet executed the instruction to climb to 36,000 feet. And you can see uh, Santa Maria is slowly disappearing behind me. If I look at the fixed page here while, while we're waiting for the airplane to stabilize, uh, GCLP is now 8 hour, 825, 26 miles behind me, so two hours of flying time, give or take. And Las Palmas is about an hour um, behind me, so we're just getting to the ETOPS point now. Entering ETOPS airspace, in other words, getting to that point where you're further than an hour away. Um, from a designated alternate airport if you lost an engine and you had to descend to 10,000 feet. So at this point, um, I'm close enough to Santa Maria that I'm obviously not going to go back to um, what wouldn't make much sense to go back to uh, Las Palmas. Um, and my other ETOPS alternate is obviously going to be quite far away now. There's my weather update that I was expecting. Um, obviously JFK is a little farther away right now. Five hours away. But that's my other... Uh, ETOPS alternate at this point. Um, and that's something that I can uh, demonstrate to you in a bit. Um, still waiting for the ground speed to stabilize so I can get a good read on that. And it will in just a moment as soon as the airplane gets back to speed. Which hopefully it'll do soon. Command the speed right now. As you can see, it's speed, vertical speed. Uh, except I've set my vertical speed to zero, so it's just holding 34,000 feet for the moment. Um, in the process, burning precious fuel. But it's virtual fuel, so it's okay. Virtual fuel is practically free, except for the uh, money you spend on power and internet. And otherwise, and well, and hardware. I am now doing 438 knots ground speed. As you can see there in the top corner. And as you can see here, I have 4,397 miles to go. And I'm going to divide that by 4.38 to come up with 10.03 hours remain of travel time assuming current speed I go and check and I see that I have 156.4 pounds of fuel remaining and I'm still using about 16 pounds an hour uh, which will hopefully change here in a minute. So 156.3 divided by 16 equals 9.76. So I have 9 point, if I stayed at this altitude, I have 9.76 hours of fuel remaining. Cause I'm tweeting on a jet plane The one I should be piloting OMG, I gotta go So many times I fooled around Made the passengers bounce up and down I lost my way while bidding on eBay Okay um, somehow or another, 
I have managed to uh, pop things up here to the uh, EFB display. So I shall show you on my second monitor here, which has somehow popped up now, uh, beyond my explanation, explanation I have, um, the visual depiction of what's going on here. Uh, we have Santa Maria over here. I'm now 646 miles away from Santa Maria, and uh, that's more than an hour away, so I'm now in ETOPS airspace. That's Extended Twin Operating Procedure airspace. And uh, if I had a problem right now, uh, I'd turn around and go back to uh, Santa Maria, uh, because I am within three hours of uh, Santa Maria at this point. Uh, later on in the flight, as we go on down the line, uh, I'll get uh, to the point where I'm almost three hours away from three hours past Santa Maria, and uh, by that point I'll be within three hours of JFK, and then if I had a problem at that point I'd go on to JFK. Uh, that's basically extended twin operating procedures. And again, it's set up such that uh, you can be no further away than three hours uh, from a suitable airfield with good weather and uh, even if you lose an engine and even if you have to descend to 2,000 feet you lose cabin pressurization something like that uh, you're still gonna be okay uh, it's basically what that means of course of course of course of course if you have a fuel leak or something huge mechanical go wrong and you lose both engines well uh, they do have you know the, in the procedures they do have things that cover that or claim they cover that but uh, let's face it your airplane is going to quickly turn into a boat and we all know how well that doesn't work just an update on where I am actually in the simulator here uh, I've stepped up to 36,000 feet uh, as a result of that last fuel check um, as you can see, maintaining 0.84 Mach, 36,000 feet, estimated to have 35.3 pounds of fuel when I land in San Francisco, 4,053 miles to go. Uh, I am coming up on my next waypoint where I'll do my next fuel check. Um, but I'm, my fuel burn has gone down, uh, as expected for the step climb, and that's what I decided to do, step climb to 36,000 feet. Um, and I'm now burning approximately 15 pounds of fuel an hour, um, which is a decrease from 16 pounds of fuel an hour. Not by much, but it does make a difference. Uh, so that's what I've done to make those numbers better, and uh, seems to be working thus far. Um, even if we go back. Uh, and look at the EFB, uh, as we'll do here. Bring it over. And bring that over as well. If you look, go back and look at the EFB data, of course now it has a change in fuel figures, so it's highlighting it. Um, but I have approximately nine hours now 10 hours, it, yeah, it's going to fluctuate, but 9 hours, 45 minutes, let's say, of fuel remaining. And with this fuel burn rate at this altitude, I have uh, 9 hours, 16 minutes to go to my destination. So I'm going to have at least had a half an hour worth of extra fuel, and I want to land with uh, about an hour and 10 minutes, hour and 20 minutes worth of extra fuel. So um, things are in pretty, looking pretty good as far as that's concerned. Um, relative to ETOPS, um, I did want to give you a, a visual depiction of that. So, um, visual depiction of that. Uh, again, basically what I just covered, that yellow line there is the optimum route of flight going from Grand Canaria up and then down to San Francisco. That would be you know, the ideal route, a great circle route, if you could do it, but you can't. Uh, we also have winds to factor in. Obviously, there's a lot of headwind going north. 
uh, along that track and if you look at that wind um, it's less significant uh, going all, along my route so even though it's further uh, because the headwind it makes more sense so I am coming up up obviously 3440 north um, I this this circle represents three hours single engine away from Gran Canaria uh, and I'm just getting to the point where I'm over three hours single engine away from Gran Canaria. So there's really no circumstance at this point in which it would make sense to go back to Gran Canaria if I had a problem. At this point, I'd be going to Santa Maria if I had a problem. And Santa Maria will continue to be my alternate, uh, 180 minutes alternate. That's the circle for Santa Maria. As you can see, it covers a decent amount of space. Uh, Santa Maria will continue to be my alternate. Um, until I get, well, approximately to where the circles cross, uh, basically, because uh, at that point I'll be closer to JFK, and of course once I'm within an hour of JFK, there's all sorts of airports uh, to serve my needs should I need them. So that's basically ETOPS. Uh, you're required to stay within 180 minutes, uh, as de depicted by those big circles there, of a suitable airfield. And uh, you'll see some smaller circles there that I believe are 60 minute arcs from uh, a couple airports and that's kind of depicting a 60 minute arc zone, uh, other spots there. But uh, that's the wind chart, flight level 380, not quite there yet. Uh, I will be stepping up there eventually. Um, so anyway, that's ETOPS um, covered for you. Oh, the other thing that got cut off as I was recording the last video, um, I've since deleted my shortcuts because my videos kept getting cut off, um, is some of the, one of the cool features of the PMDG 777. Uh, it's particularly designed for long-haul flight simulator enthusiasts, like myself. Um, so you can hit menu on the um, CDU, and then go into PMDG setup and there's a lot of options here uh, a lot of different things you can change go under options simulation and the fourth page in one two three four just have to hit the next page button four times uh, you can select whether you want to auto step climb no or yes in this case I'm gonna say yes because I'm going to take a nap here and uh, I don't want to be running out of fuel earlier than I think I would so I'm going to let the airplane auto step climb while I'm taking a nap. Uh, you can also choose whether or not you want it to pause before top of descent. If you're going to be awake during top of descent or at the computer, then, you know, no is fine. If you aren't going to be at the computer or you could sleep through it potentially, which sometimes happen to me, happens to me, I'm going to go ahead and select yes. Uh, auto time compression up to 2%, uh, but I have direct sim control and there's another weather update uh, the loveliness of flight simulator demonstrated yet again um, I wonder if X-Plane does pulls that same kind of stunt anyway um, but I love PMDG so it's worth it uh, it's worth it it's worth it what's worth it so you uh, this is set up so you can do a direct sim rate control through the right clicking the chronometer button um, but I don't like adjusting my summary so that's a button you can press press if that's something that you so desire uh, but that's just one of the other cool options uh, on the triple seven as presented by PMDG and uh, what do you know? We have, have a convenient little iCast message here. I was wondering when this would, ha would happen. It says fuel low center. And what that basically means is the center tank is empty. And I will show you, t show you this on the convenient little fuel diagram here that will pop up. And we see we have one pound of fuel and it's highlighted in yellow left in the center tank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to my overhead panel here. 
and it's part of why the fuel check is important. And turn off the center tank pumps. Turn off the left one, and you can see it goes from green to white. And turn off the right one, again green to white. And that uh, 0.9 pounds that's remaining should all go uh, into the left hand side. And it will just be slowly, slowly, slowly moved over to the left hand side. So that's uh, the only fuel procedure, really, that you have to do in the 777. And now we're burning off, we're burning the fuel in the left wing tank and the right wing tank. Um, and slowly siphoning off the fuel from the center tank. So, that's the fuel procedure. Conveniently done. Um, at this point, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay sane, happy railroadings, happy landings. Bye. Code Monkey Lag Creative Commons.